Hello and welcome to another tutorial from More ICT. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to make a platform game using Windows Form and C Sharp in Visual Studio. So this is the project preview. Let's take a look. All right. So here you have we have uh, lots of different platforms on there. We have some of these enemies shown in the pink color. Uh, the coins are yellow. Uh, you see you got uh, vertical and horizontally moving platforms. Okay, I can move the player left and right. I can jump. Okay, so if I just go and collect a few coins. Okay, the main objective of this game is to collect all the coins and go to the green door that's right at the top. So if I just drop down to this platform here, I'm able to move with the platform. Also, I'm able to move with this platform as well. So I can still move left and right and it's moving me left and right when I just leave the keyboard. Okay, so I just need to go re collect the remaining coins. Okay. If you touch the, any of the enemies, the game ends. So you're able to restart the game by hitting the enter, enter key. All right. Okay, I died again. Let me see if I can collect those two coins in the bottom. Okay. Just wait for the platform to go back up. So these two platforms, they have their own indep independent um, speed. So they can move uh, up and down in any, um, any speed that you set to in C Sharp. So I'm able to jump on top of it. Okay, so now as I've touched the door and I've collected all the coins, so it tells me, well done, your quest is over. And basically the game ends. So you can also press enter to restart the game and you're gonna play from the beginning again. Okay, so this game is based on the tutorial I've done a while ago. Um, it's basically a simple platform tutorial on Moo ICT. Uh, you still have the access to the written tutorial on there and uh, this one uses some images uh, for the tutorial so this project we're going to be making from scratch so let's just go make a new project in visual studio so i'm going to create a new project uh, it's a windows form project so make sure it's a windows form app dot net framework next so I call this one Um, more ICT. Okay. Click create. So first thing, let's go and change the title of this form. So let's say platform game more ICT. So it just comes up on there instead of saying um, form one. Okay. So we can make this form slightly larger so we can see all the components that we need. So you can set it to any height. Let's set it. Set this one to say, let's say six seventy by eight hundred. So it's a nice number number to remember. Okay, let's give this one a background color of light blue. Okay. After the background is done, uh, now we need to add a few components. So first one we're going to do is the label. So this is the one that's on the top of the screen that's showing the score. Okay, let's go change the name of this one to txt score. Set auto size to false so we can resize the text. Okay. Can make it a bit bigger. Stays there. Okay, so inside of here I'm gonna change the text to score zero. And also be able to change the text align. I want the text to be from the top right, so just text to show there. Now we can change the font options to say consolers. Yeah, fourteen is fine. Okay, so with that done, now we can go grab a, a picture box. So let's start with just one, and then we can copy and paste that to make the rest of the platforms. Okay, so right now um, the width can be different sizes. We're just interested in the height. So I'm going to set the height to 30. So it stays a bit like that. Okay, 
so let's just make this one a bit longer I want all the platforms to have the maroon color background so they're distinguishable okay. so yeah, that's fine okay we can give this one a tag called platform okay let's move one over here small one here Do another small one here This is going to be the one that's going left and right so we're going to make sure that this is sort of out of reach for the player to sort of just jump onto okay let's make another one here okay and we're also going to be using a small one that's moving up and down for the let's say that's fine we need another one for the player okay let's change the size of the player to so if 30 40 maybe okay that's fine um, give the player a background of dark blue okay. it's okay now we're just gonna copy the player but before we do that let's name this one player so we can call this from the C sharp script Okay, let's make another one right over here okay, that can be the door so we can give this one dark green background okay, so now if I just copy and paste the player here so this could be our first enemy so we'll call this one enemy one let's copy and paste it again and this would be enemy 2 okay so if i hold shift and click on the second one i'm able to select both right change the background to yeah that's that's fine also we have to give it a tag the tag of enemy okay so these platforms have a tag all of them have a tag called platform the enemies have a tag called enemy uh, now we need to create the coin so I'm just gonna copy the enemy from there and let's give this a size of say 25 by 25 it's gonna have a background of yellow okay and um, the tag is still enemy so we're gonna give it this one a tag called coin so we don't need to name these ones because we're going to identify them from the C sharp script so I just make a few copies of this I'm just holding control and dragging on there okay so if I select all of them oops selected the label as well I select them individually I can move some here delete one from there select the still got the enemy selected okay I have a few there that's fine okay select the enemy move some of them down here send this guy to the back behind the platform and behind the coins okay move three more here maybe move two here we have added the coins and the enemies now to the screen uh, time to rename 
this platform because these two platforms are going to be moving this one's going to be moving horizontally and this one will be moving vertically so we just need to name them so we can call it in the c sharp script so let's name this one horizontal platform and uh, make sure it still has the platform tag on it so it's just the name that we're interested in at the moment Hold this one vertical platform one last thing we need right now is the timer okay so i'll drag and drop the timer in here let's name the timer game timer set enable to true and also change the interval to 20 and from inside the properties we're going to go to the events window and inside here just type in here game, main game timer event press enter and that should add a event for the timer uh, we also need a key down and key up so if you click on the form and go to the events window you should see the key down and key up events so let's go ahead and say key is down and then we can say key is up okay so we have the three events okay. let's also add a function that will reset re, uh, sorry reset the game Completely restart game. Uh, right above the form one line, we're going to declare the variables that we need. So let's go with boolean first. So I'm not doing the camera casing. Okay, because all of these are type of booleans, so we can just put them all in one line. So they still get declared, but they all get set to false. And that's what we want in the beginning so we're gonna need a jump speed and famous integer for score is default value zero player speed will set to seven for now so these are for the player now let's go to the horizontal speed to 5 vertical speed to 3 to 5 and 2 speed is equals to 3 okay so these are the variables that we need uh, first these are the booleans right so they can only go between true and false uh, these are the integers that we need for the player uh, this is the speed for the horizontal and vertical platforms and these two are the speed for enemy one and enemy two uh, so the way we're going to collect the coins in the game is we're not going to remove these from the scene what we're going to do is we are going to set them to invisible in the form inside the property there's an option called visible is this one here so this is they are all set to true at this point so let's say for example if I take this coin here and then just set it to false inside the visible and if I run the game okay see so all of them are visible except for the one that we set to invisible what we're going to do is we're going to use that to basically check if the player collides with the coins and then we're going to set them all to uh, invisible but in the restart function, we need to find them and set them all back to visible again. Okay, let's get started in the restart function. So we're going to say jumping is false. Go left to false. Go right to false. Score to zero. So now we need to run the for each loop so inside the for each loop we are interested in the controls so say well, control style okay that's fine so 
Visual Studio to complete. Uh, most of the time it works great, but sometimes it just doesn't. Okay, so inside this we're going to check if X is a type of control. Okay, so say if right is X is picture box. So if it's a type of picture box and we're interested in whether that picture box is visible. So X dot visible is equals equals false. Right, so if any of the picture boxes are not visible to the screen, we're going to make them visible. We're going to set them all back to true. So uh, by doing this, we don't have to identify them um, in any way. Uh, we can simply run the loop to say, okay, which one is invisible, because it's only going to be the coins that get set invisible. So this will work out great for us. Okay, so now we need to reset the position of layer platform and enemies okay so right now I think they're all in a good position so we can just take the position from now and set it up okay so player is 72 and 656 okay and the left is going to be 72 and 656 so whenever the game starts the player will be placed right here okay enemy one sorry this is enemy two let's go to enemy two we just interested in the x value of this one so enemy one x value is going to be four seven one okay enemy two to the left going to be location 360 okay and we also to reset the platform so the platform horizontal platform is 275 okay and the vertical platform the vertical platform we need the top location of the vertical platform not the left okay so let's go with the top location is 581 I believe yes so we can set it to 581 last thing we need to add the start the game timer so game timer dot start okay so that's it for the uh, restart function uh, now we can go and do the key down and key up so inside the key is down we're going to do a couple of if statements Last one is going to be for the space. So with the space key, we also need to check if you're already jumping. Okay, so if you're already jumping, then we don't want to double jump. So what we're going to do is we're just going to allow the player to jump once. Okay, so if jumping is false, then we'll set jumping back to true. So this is going to be false, not true. Okay, uh, so let's do the key is up event now. So in here, we can copy and paste these two and set these back to false. So whenever the keys are released, the booleans will go back to false instead of true. Okay, and we also need to check if jumping is true and set jumping back to false again. Okay, so the last key up we need to do is for the restart function. So I'm going to check if so if the enter button is pressed and is game over set to true, only then we want to start the restart game function. Okay, so this way uh, the player can't restart in the middle of the game. Okay, so these are the two events. So that's for the key down and that's for the key up.
Okay, so let's get to the main games loop, which is the game timer. Uh, first thing, let's go and set the text. So text is cool. So it updates inside the timer as we add score when the player collects the coins. We're gonna set the gravity for the player with the jump speed. Okay, so whatever the jump speed is, it will be pushing the player down or up in the form. Okay, let's go to if. So both of these are going to be moving the player left or right. If any of these booleans are true, then it's going to deduct the player's left position by using the player speed variable that we declared above here. Okay, and it's going to do the same for the right. So uh, when the player is moving left, it usually deducts it. And then when the player is moving right, it usually adds it. Okay, so let's go and do the jump. True and force is less than zero, set jumping back to false. So basically in these two if statements what's going on is if jumping variable is true, right? so the force variable is going to help us determine how high the player actually jumps. So at the moment the force we haven't declared it just yet because we're going to once you hit one of the platforms uh, you'll get the force replenished in the integer. So if the force is less than zero then we're setting the jump variable back to false so you can't jump any higher so basically whenever the jump variable is false the jump speed goes back to 10. And if jumping variable is true, then jump speed is equals to minus eight because that's what's controlling the player's gravity in the top here. Okay, so it's gonna move the player up and then as soon as the jump, uh, the force variable goes below one, it's gonna start moving the player down again. So to do a for each loop, inside the for each loop, we're going to do control. One says if x is picture box, so we're just interested in picture boxes. So instead of here, we're going to say if string x dot tag is equals equals platform. So everything that happens inside this if statement is going to be determined by the platform. Okay, so now we can check for the collision. So you can say player dot bounds dot intersect with x dot bounds okay so we can check if player is intersecting with any of the platforms literally any any one of them on the scene right so if it is first thing we need to do is we're going to set force back to eight so player can jump again from the platform and then we're going to say player dot top is equals to x dot top minus player height so that way whenever a player jumps on top of the platform it's going to move the player right on above the platforms you can also do a thing where you can bring the x to front okay so i want the platforms to be in the front of everything else okay so i think we're okay to give it a go oh brilliant okay so now i can move left and right i can jump so see, as soon as, I, as soon as the force hits zero, it moves me back. So I can jump on top of this platform as well. Okay, I can jump on that. Let's see if I can get to the top. Okay, I can't reach it, that's good. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, one of the things you'll notice that uh, the player is a bit glitchy because that's because we're using a timer and inside the bounds, it's not exactly um, 
foolproof so we're kind of just making use of the timer to make sure like you know to push the player down a lot so anytime the uh, gravity changes because it's checking this every 20 milliseconds so that's why it's a, a little bit glitchy but it does help um, when we have this line here to have the glitch slightly less if I just comment this line out right you can see the glitch right in front of the platforms right but whenever the platforms are in front it looks a bit less so if I run it again so as you can see you can't really see that uh, glitchy part but you can still see the top being glitchy it's the simplest way I could figure out how to do a platform game in Windows form okay so now let's do the coins so you can say string yeah not yeah equals equals coin so if the because we're still inside the picture box bit here right so we're still inside the big if statement so we can check we're checking if that any of those have a tag of platform then we do this but any of them have a tag of coin we can intersect with the player as well and do something different so we can once again say kind of bounds intersect with x dot bounds and then in this case we're gonna set x so x dot visible goes false and then we're gonna say score plus plus <coughs> okay so if we run this now there's gonna be a slight problem let me show you what the issue is so if we run this right now and I just go collect one coin so as you can see we are getting a lot of score right that's because um, although the picture box is invisible right we are still colliding with it so right now I got like 400 I'm gonna to go to 500 or something like that okay so one of the ways to solve this issue is we can add another condition to this if statement to say if player is um, colliding with the coin but at the same time if X is visible okay so X will have to be visible in order for us to collide with it but if we do collide with it then we're going to change it to invisible and we're going to add one but this both of these conditions will have to be true in order for us to get a score okay, so if I run this again so now I can go collect I only collected two although I'm in the same position as those two are because of those two conditions right now I can only collect it once can't go I can't jump that high so it's okay okay let's do the enemies one so let's check for if string enemy All right and let's see if player if player is colliding with the enemy then we can say game timer dot stop so we stop the game and then we can say is game over is set to true but we also want to show a little message on the top with the score so we can say txt dot score nope the text equals score plus new line so I'm just gonna add a new line to it because we have we made this is why we made the label slightly bigger so we can have a new line right underneath it so you can say here so just say you were killed in your journey okay so let's try that out so now if I jump up there and touch that <coughs> so straight away you can see that it tells me that as soon as you touch it you were killed in your journey so let's go and try to touch the second one okay that works 
Okay, so now let's move this platform left and right, and then we'll move uh, this platform right after that as well. So let's start with the horizontal platform first. So horizontal platform dot left is going to be minus equals horizontal speed. Okay, so we're going to do move left first. Uh, we can also check. Yeah, so we can say if um, horizontal platform the left the left is less than zero or if it's greater than the uh, forms width so the way we check this is horizontal platform dot left plus horizontal platform dot width right, so it's, if it's greater than this dot client size dot width so with this it will dynamically calculate the size of the form and then it will return it back to us and so we can check whether this one's left and the width is greater than the client's width and then if it is we're just going to reverse the speed okay so we can say horizontal speed equals minus horizontal speed so if we try that out now as you can see it's moving and it bounces off this corner as well but one of the nice thing is though is that because we're dynamically calculating if I were to make the form bigger then it would automatically go and find wherever that edge is and it will adjust to it so I can also make it smaller so it kind of gives you that little freedom to make the game as big or as small as you want okay so let's go to the vertical one so vertical one right now I want it to stop probably here so let's go 195 if I undo that then 581 okay the vertical platform the top is going to be plus equals vertical speed okay and then we can say vertical platform our top is say less than 195 or platform dot top is greater than 581 then we're just going to reverse the speed as we have done for the vertical one so I go minus sorry done for the horizontal one so you're gonna go minus that did I get it right I wonder Yeah, 581, that's okay. So let's go and try that out now. As you can see, both of the platforms are now moving. This one should be reversing back. Okay, excellent. Okay, so what we also can do now is we can start moving the enemies. So let's say enemy one dot left is minus equals. So what we want to do for the enemies is that we want to make sure that they stay on this platform. All right. So anything that goes below this platform or greater than this platform, they need to reverse their speed. Okay, let's do that now. So say for example, enemy one dot left is if it's less than uh, which picture box is it on? So if you use on picture box five, so we can just say box 5 dot left right so if it goes below this point here we want it to reverse and also we need to check enemy one dot left plus enemy one dot width is greater than picture box 5 dot left plus picture box 5 dot width okay so we're checking if the enemy is on this corner here and then we need to basically move it back again. Okay, so if we want to check this out now, we can say minus, so it just reverses this integer for us. So let's go and have a look at this. So we can see the enemy moving there and then when it comes this side, it should move also. Okay, so it's the same dynamic way that we have done the other one. So if I were to make this let's say slightly longer even and try it again so it will go to the edge of that okay 
pretty cool. So we can do that and then move on to enemy two. So let's see if enemy two. Let me check the other one first. So I forgot that. Enemy two. So we're gonna move this one the other way instead of both moving in the same direction. So we're gonna move them the other way. So okay. So enemy two is currently on picture box two. So we can say similar way we done the other one. The left is less than box two dot left or plus enemy two dot width is greater than minus and we're just going to change the speed to minus So if we run this now, we should be able to see how we do. Okay, so uh, the top one at the moment, we don't have to do much in order for the player to stand and move on it because the player's top is always going to be the top part of the platform. Uh, the one that we need to figure out, and it took me embarrassingly long to actually figure out was um, this one here. So as you can see now, if I don't move from there, it automatically moves away from under the player because we haven't told you what to do when it's on the player right so I can get I can get on it but it's kind of just gonna drop me from it right um, okay so this is going to be a simple solution so let's take a look okay so right here where we are checking for the platform Right, so we can check for something else as well. So inside this if statement, let's do another if in here. So we're going to check string first. So we'll check x dot name. Right. So because they all have the same tag, but we named this one and this one differently. So we're just interested in this one's name at the moment. So if the name is equals to, I'm just going to copy the name from there. So if that's the name, right? And so right now what we need to do, once the player is on the platform, we need to make sure to move the player when the left button or the right button isn't pressed. Because once these buttons are pressed, we still want the player to be able to move left and right. And if none of these buttons are pressed, then we want to basically just move the player along with the platform. Okay, so go left is equals false, right? And then we can do all here with the right so you can just copy and paste that here and that's going to be go right just minimize this so <coughs> you can see the code a little bit better okay so right now we're checking if the name is horizontal platform and go left is false and if also the name is horizontal platform and go right is false right and then we're just going to say player dot left is equals minus equals sorry minus equals horizontal speed. So we're just going to move it with whatever speed the platform is moving with. Okay. So if I were to run this now, I can go and oops it did all. Oh, I can restart you already. Very nice. that now okay so as you can see now uh, when none of the buttons are being pressed the character moves pretty much with the platform but if I do press a button I can still move left and right okay I can still jump And it pretty much just just about moves with the uh, platform. Okay, cool.
Okay, so it's basically just the one if statement inside that platform uh, one and inside of the bounds. So we still want the character to stay on top of the platforms. So, but just in case the player has landed on the horizontal platform, we want it to move left and right with it. And that's all it's doing. Okay, so we need to give some different um, elements here as well. So we, what we want to do is we want the game to be over if you if you drop off the platform. Okay. Let's do another if statement inside the timer. So if player dot top plus player dot height is greater than this dot client size dot height plus let's say fifty. So if it's done, then we're gonna say game timer dot stop. And then we can just say is game over equals to true. Uh, we also need to change the text. Scroll the text equals score plus fell to your death okay so in here we can say uh, if the player has dropped off the platform so it's looking for the height of the platform if it's gone below another 50 from the platform right uh, we're going to stop the time matching the game over to true and then we're just going to say you feel oh, you fell <laughs> yeah, well you won't be feeling much um, so you fell off uh, of the platform you fell to your death okay so let's go start that now and let's see if I just run off to it. Okay, so it literally tells me you fell to your death. So if you have, then it gives you a different uh, message. Okay, so we do need to do one where if you have caught all the um, coins, right, and then went and touched the door, the game to be over. Okay. Now we need to check if the player is hitting the door and if so, then we can actually show the last message for the game. Okay, so if we go back here, let's try and go to the properties. Yeah, I haven't changed the name to door yet. Change the name of this picture box to door. Okay, and if we go back here now, so we can say if intersect with door door bounds, and we also need to check if. Um, the score is 26. Score equals equals 26. Okay, in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to show this here. So we can say game timer dot stop is game over just true, and then we can say uh, quest is complete. Okay, uh, we can also do an else statement here to basically just to show a message say collect all the coins oh, coins so it will always show this message on the screen so you know what to do when the game is running okay so let's try to run this now and let's see how it works okay so see it tells you you know collect all the coins so let's try and collect them all now okay collect those oh I died <laughs> that's fine Can try again Intense. Okay, so now we got all 26. Go jump in there. And then as soon as you touch the door, it says your 
quest is now complete. So we have uh, covered pretty much everything that I wanted to cover in this game. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you on the next one.